Welcome to Beside the Burn for Friday the 28th of October. All this week we've been looking at chapter 17 and 18 of Revelation in preparation for Sunday as we meet around the Lord's table. And the lesson that we've been learning from these two chapters is that the world is out to seduce us away from the perfect bridegroom, Jesus Christ. We as the church, members of the church, are meant to be the bride, beautifully prepared uh, for our bridegroom's return. At the moment, we are waiting on the return of the bridegroom. And uh, you can uh, remember the story that Jesus told of the ten virgins waiting on the bridegroom. Uh, Five of them were prepared and ready with oil in their lamps so that whenever the bridegroom arrived, they were ready to go and meet him. The other five weren't prepared and weren't ready. And so when the bridegroom arrived, they'd run out of oil and they had to go and try and find oil. And whenever they came back to the bridegroom, the door had been closed and they missed out. And so as we prepare to meet around the table on Sunday, we are to be prepared for the return of our bridegroom. And this week we've been preparing to share in communion. But as we share in communion on Sunday, we are preparing for that ultimate meal, the wedding supper of the Lamb, so that when Jesus returns, we are brought to him as a beautiful bride prepared and ready for this relationship that will last for all eternity. Today then, at the end of chapter 18, we find the final destruction of Babylon, this prostitute who has been uh, sitting on the beast trying to seduce us away from Jesus Christ. But here we have the final destruction. And what we're going to find on Sunday is that as we go into chapter 19, there is rejoicing. There's rejoicing among God's people that finally Satan and Babylon has been destroyed and now we are able to enter into this new phase with Jesus Christ as our bridegroom and we are united to him for all eternity. So let's read together from chapter 18 and we find the final destruction of this world and of Babylon. And uh, in the NIV, the title of this section is The Finality of Babylon's Doom. Verse 21, Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, With such violence the great city of Babylon will be thrown down never to be found again. So here we have the return of Jesus Christ and the picture that we're given of the return of Jesus is a boulder, size of a millstone. It's not a a small little stone and it's being thrown into the sea. And you can imagine the impact of that boulder hitting the sea and the splash and the water. And that shows us what is happening to Babylon, thrown down. It will never be found again. This is the ultimate victory of Jesus Christ. Verse 22, we're told of the things that are no longer going to happen in Babylon. Up until this point, life has been carrying on as normal. The people that have given themselves to Babylon have been living and eating and drinking and reveling and enjoying life to the full. But all the things that they had found meaning in in their life are coming to an end. The music of harpists and musicians, pipers and trumpeters will never be heard in you again. No worker of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a millstone will never be heard in you again. All these normal things of life are coming to an end because Jesus Christ is returning in victory. Verse 23, the light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of a bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were the world's important people. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. In her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people, of all who have been slaughtered on earth. This is a a terrible state that we find the world in, but it is a state that has been of the world's choosing. 
The world has chosen to be seduced by Babylon. The world has chosen to turn away from God and to go with Babylon. And now that Jesus has come, all these things have come to an end. There's no more light. There's no more marriage. There's no more trading. All these things are being destroyed. And it's interesting that here we have a number of things that are coming to an end and will be no more. And with Jesus coming and then us being united with him and going to the wedding supper of the Lamb, we will be in the new heaven and the new earth. And that's described for us in Revelation 21. And there we're told about the bride coming to meet Jesus. And there's a list of things that were given in Revelation 21 that will be no more. And they're not enjoyable things that will be no more. There are things that we should hate and that we don't enjoy. This is what it says in Revelation 21 verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and the new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. And now here's the list of things that will be no more and compare it to the list we've just read in chapter 18. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. So with the destruction of Babylon, we rejoice and we give thanks to God. Not because people are being destroyed, but because Jesus is bringing in his kingdom. And we rejoice in the fact that this evil is being taken away. There's a new heaven and a new earth. A new place for us to live in unity with our Saviour. Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. And we have this wonderful reassurance that he is here and he will not forsake us. So as we prepare to meet around the table on Sunday, let's examine our lives. Let's look carefully and see that we have not been seduced in any way. That we haven't been seduced completely and utterly so that we have completely forsaken Jesus. But also let's examine little parts of our lives where perhaps in a small little way we have been seduced and we've been taken away. We've been blinded or confused. And let's confess those things and repent of them and return to Jesus and wait for him. As the bridegroom to return, keeping ourselves faithful and pure, trusting in his return and the promises that he has made, that he will keep us and help us not to give in to temptation, but to stand firm for him. And that's an important aspect of our spiritual lives as we come to the table on Sunday, that we confess our sin. And that we come to this table and as we eat and drink, we remember what Jesus has done. But we also look forward to what Jesus is going to do as he comes back again as the bridegroom waiting on his bride. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we look to you this day as we prepare to come to your table on Sunday. We ask, Lord, that you would expose in us the sin that we hold on to, that we might confess that sin. And as we receive your forgiveness, that we would come to your table. We pray, Lord, that the eating and drinking on Sunday around your table would be an opportunity for us to prepare for that wedding supper of the Lamb. That as your bride, we would be dressed beautifully in your righteousness ready to meet with you 
and to dwell with you. So we pray that you would be with us, Lord, and that you would help us. Amen. So we hope that you'll be able to come and join with us on Sunday around the Lord's table. Next week we're going to uh, look at chapter 19 or the first 10 verses of chapter 19 uh, just as we give thanks for having met around the table. And remember on Sunday as you come along uh, we're going to have some uh, slightly different procedures. Uh, We're going to go back to um, the way that we used to do communion before covid Uh, just with a a few little uh, additions. Uh, We're going to have the bread and the cup served as it were. Uh, But uh, the bread's going to be in little um, uh, paper uh, cups. And that means that whenever you reach for the bread, uh, you don't have to um, touch the bread um, that anyone else is going to touch. And whenever the cup are brought around uh, they will be spaced out on the trays uh, so that again you can uh, reach for one of the little glasses without touching anyone else's the elders will walk between uh, the pews so everyone will be sitting on every other pew leaving a a blank one for the elders to walk along uh, so that you don't have to pass the plates and uh, in that way we hope to keep things as safe as possible but also as normal as possible So hopefully we'll see you around the Lord's table on Sunday. Thank you.